Good evening, I'm Barkhadat, you're with the Mojo Story. History in our country continues to be a contemporary political battlefield. And the latest controversy from our past to hit the headlines is a memorial, a smarak at the Jallianwala Bagh massacre site in Amritsar. Let's bring up our special focus on the program today. We are looking at the restoration of the Jallianwala Bagh. This, of course, as everybody knows, is one of the worst examples of British brutality pre-independence. A massacre literally as British troops opened fire on Indians. The Prime Minister is calling the smarak there a reminder of the journey for freedom. Of course, all of this is happening a few months before the Punjab elections, and that is also important to note. But it's also important to remember that lights and lasers may not be the best way to mark the lives lost at this massacre site. Historians and commentators are up in arms, but this isn't just about the BJP. It is, in fact, a multi-party representation on the Jallianwala Bagh Trust. Historians are saying is a, it's a Disneyland approach to history, a Disneyfication of what remains one of the most brutal examples of our colonial past. On the program today, we'll try and understand why there is such a ferocious fight as well as disquiet over the Jallianwala Bagh Smarak, uh, a kind of commemoration that was tweeted out by the Prime Minister himself that is being described as a lights and laser show. Uh, let me introduce our guests on the program today, uh, one by one, uh, Tavleen Singh, veteran journalist and commentator is with us, extremely acerbic remarks from her uh, on this uh, particular smarak. Uh, we're by Anchal Malhotra. Anchal is a very, very uh, compelling oral historian, in particular uh, focusing a lot of her work on, on the partition of the subcontinent. Kishwar Desai is uh, with us. Kishwar, of course, is the founder of the Partition Museum uh, in Punjab, uh, also now taking um, that museum to, to Bengal. Uh, so, Kishwar, welcome to the program. Geeta Bhatt, uh, who is, of course, a professor of history at the Delhi University, is with us. And Sandeep Ghosh, columnist commentator, is with us as well. Uh, Kishwar, let me start uh, with you, in fact. Uh, you know, how do you respond to what you've seen thus far uh, of this Jallianwala Bagh Asmarak? You know, almost all of us, uh, like our ch your childhood was not complete till you were taken for a visit to the Jallianwala Bagh. You saw that narrow lane where General Dyer ordered his, uh, his, his men to open fire on, on, on Indians. It was a monstrous uh, incident. What do you make of what you've seen so far, the attempt to commemorate it in a modern way, so to speak? Uh, thank you, Barkha. Firstly, I must point out that, um, you know, our trust had done mostly around three years of research on Jallianwala Bagh. And we did very, very intensive research. We had put proposals to the government that something needs to be done there. So I need to put that on the table. And also that I was approached uh, by someone who I think is the same agency that has set up the museums there to give us all the to give them all the research that we had collated over the years. And we had handed over that research to them in the hope that it would be used in the museum. We are very passionate about this. We felt that there was a lot of misrepresentation uh, that needed to be corrected within the museums that were there earlier. I also want to say that my own family members were there. My grandmother was very close by uh, when the Jallianwala Bagh massacre took place. She lived there. I have written a book about this. So I have to say that as of now, I all that I have seen is online because I'm in London right now. But just the, the first look of that corridor, that very narrow corridor through which General Dyer had walked, which for me is a really a heartbreaking reminder of what happened. I am devastated to see that those bricks, those bricks that were a witness to a lot that had happened on that evening and when that massacre took place. And it was a it was a reminder of how these people were. It was a very, very, uh, you know, it, the, the land around Debarkha was nothing like what we see in the photographs just now. It was a barren land. It was undulating, which is why Dyer could shoot at them right from the entrance itself. He did not even have to enter the bog because they were at, at a depth. Do you know that the bog was about five feet lower, some bits of it, five feet lower than the entrance to the bog? So they were like 
literally helpless uh, sitting ducks, if you like, you know, just uh, for this massacre to take place. So in any case, what has happened today, I mean, if these pictures are correct, whatever we are seeing, it has even more, uh, you know, destroyed whatever was left of the original bag. Uh, we ourselves, when we were doing our research, we had noticed that there were areas within the bag where the bullet holes had practically got covered up because, you know, the, there was a garden here before as well, and that garden was at a higher level than the bullet holes. And as a result of which, the bullet holes were no longer visible. So my biggest fear is that that particular, uh, you know, that, that very, very stark look, which is what we had wanted if we had been given a chance to restore the bark, we should have brought back so that people could go back to what it actually was like, the barren land, the bullet holes, the, the kind of space where so many people lost their lives. Uh, I think that has got come somewhat completely changed. But the only thing I do hope, Barkha, is that they used some of the research which we had given them because we had even corrected the names of the martyrs which had been displayed at memorials earlier with spelling mistakes and so on. We have also only what the government has has, has released, the Prime Minister's own Twitter handle uh, has released these images, so I have no reason to doubt uh, their authenticity. Uh, Tavleen, is this debate a debate around aesthetics? Or is it a debate about something deeper? And before I say this, I just want to say that I looked up the, the Jallianwala Bagh uh, Trust, and it is uh, not just the BJP; it is uh, also the Congress. Uh, and you know, here you can see its 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 members. So if we're going to hold people to account, we've got to hold uh, you know hold the whole lot of them uh, to to account. Uh, but but talk a little bit about why this is so disturbing and why this is more than just a subjective disagreement on creative aesthetics. Uh, it's not about aesthetics, although the aesthetics do matter. This is the equivalent of a Holocaust museum. So you've got to keep the memory of what happened there as a remembrance, you don't have to put, you don't have to change what was there. You have to preserve it. And what they've done effectively is change what is there. And for me, it's a very personal thing because as an atheistic Sikh, I would always go in Mathajek or first in Jallianwala Bagh before going to the Darbar Sahib to do any Mathajek going. And do you know in the 80s when we when there was all that trouble in the in the in the Golden Temple, and we used to go there. We were there the whole time. I I must have gone there every day, and every time that I went there, there was something that you know that that affected me personally, as if you know somebody I knew had died there. Although I, unlike um, Anchal and Kishwar, I didn't have anyone die there. My family came from the other side of the border. But the, the, the point is that, you know, this, is, this was hallowed ground, you know? This is, that's why I used the word desecration when I talked about it. This is not, uh, this is not any old museum. This is yeah. the, the remembrance of the most important, I mean, the, the, the decline of the British Raj begins from this event, right? You don't, you don't remember the dead by you know by having a kind of a theme park you know with with lights and music you know this is not i mean i really am appalled by what i've seen yeah uh anshul bring in bring in your perspective i think as the dean said for for some of you here it's very personal but i think for every indian it, the one thing that you know you close your eyes and you think of the british atrocities and you say jallianwala park it is it is uh, it is in the muscle memory of this nation, right? So I think it really matters how you uh, how you remember it, how you mark it. And I agree with Tavleen and Kishwar that this is our Holocaust museum. Uh, your 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 thoughts today? Well, this is a personal history for me. As Tavleen said, my great grandfather was there when it happened. This is the story that's really been passed down in my family. So it's very personal to me. He told it to his sons who told it to us. This sound and light show, this shiny new manicured version of the bag is it feels like a grotesque erasure of something that is so intimate and must be cared for. 
it doesn't do justice. It doesn't befit the memories of those who died there or those who survived it. And I think that we need to think about the vocabulary we use when we talk about memorials, because there is a difference between a celebration and a commemoration. And renovation is not the same thing as restoration. This is not the way to commemorate a site of importance. This is not sensitive or empathetic. And what troubles me the most, see, I'm the youngest person on this panel, and I'm worried about people who are younger than me. When I would go to the bag, touching the bullet holes, walking through that corridor, it's haunting. I'm talking about it right now, and it's haunting. And that is a way to connect because a physical trace remains. So much of the bark has already been changed, even a couple of years ago, but now it's completely been decimated. If I have children and I want to tell them about their great great grandfather who survived this massacre, what will I show them? You know, the, this is what worries me that a solemn place, a place of mourning, has been made into some airport lobby wedding type venue. It makes me very upset. Yeah, I, I and I hear you and I can't even, you know, I'm getting goosebumps just listening to this because I think the memory is so tactile for so many of us, uh, you know, even as just, uh, even as visitors to Jalewala Bagh, even if we don't have great grandfathers or a grandfather like, uh, you know, grandparent like Kishwar, a great grandparent like you, uh, it is it is visceral. And uh, Geeta Bhatt, I think what Anchal is really saying is as it is we worry that our young generation or younger generation does not know our history and if we are going to dress it up we are going to make it like a Disneyland we're going to make it like a theme park or an airport lounge as she said it is completely disrespectful of the lives lost of the collective trauma uh, this is this is the incident from which India was was born this massacre was the womb from which India independent India in some ways was delivered Geeta Bhatt your thought as, a, as is particularly as a, as a historian well, uh, Barkhaji, to correct you, I am I come as a political analyst or as an academician. No, I'm, no. I, do not, I do not have a history no. background, but yes, uh, you know, like every Indian, uh, I too also uh, relate to when, uh, you know, when we talk about Jallianwala Bagh, you know, some an incident which instilled, you know, fiery nationalism in, in many uh, in those days, uh, including people like Uddham Singh. And uh, when we talk about, uh, you know, about the, uh, the changes which have been made or rather, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the debate about, uh, you know, the restoration of the place or of renovation of the place, uh, you know, it is important to note that, yes, it is very important that, uh, uh, that the, the feel of going to a place, uh, how one feels when recollecting of what had actually happened. At, at that time on 13th of April 1919, you know, where many other days, some people say that almost nearly a thousand people were dead, but of course, official record is a little lesser than that. Now, a uh, few, uh, like the other uh, panelists have uh, raised certain issues. So as far as, uh, uh, you know, the light and sign, sound show, Barkhaji, if I can recollect, it is something which has been happening in the past. It is not something which has been added right now. And it was... Uh, uh, as far as I remember, I think it was Mr. Amitabh Bachchan's, uh, you know, voice which plays, uh, you know, tells the, the horrific tale of what happened, you know, of that massacre. And it may have been, you know, uh, revisited and made it with, a, with a, maybe a new voice. I haven't seen or been to the place now after the changes. Mm -hmm. But as far as this light and sound show, it was already there. It is not that it wasn't there. It was already okay. there before. Right? Can I can I just now, can I just the get the point is that yeah, yeah can I can I just now the uh, the second point is that there have been changes like uh, you know the enter and exit points have been changed which was earlier there it is not there and as far as yes there can be a definitely debate and yeah you you don't actually have the best line but I've got the gist of your uh, your argument and I want to just bring in Kishwar briefly before I go to Sandeep uh, I don't remember a sound and light show at the Jallianwala Bagh I haven't been for many years maybe there was one there certainly was a Sonia Lumer uh, show at the Red Fort that we all grew up uh, on in, in in Delhi so I think it's important to put in context that when when we say the lights and lasers is a kind of desecration which all of you have said so far uh, Kishwar, how would you respond to Geeta Bhatt's argument that sound and light uh, telling of history has often been a part of our uh, traditions? 
Yes, um, Rakha, yes, she is correct. There was a sound and light show, which was actually no longer working. All the systems had collapsed. So for almost the last 10, maybe 15 years, that sound and light show was not being held regularly, uh, was not being shown regularly. But I do want to begin this point about, uh, and emphasize about innovation, this restoration. Often, when we look at old we do tend to take away the kind of, I mean, actually, when the door goes in, they try and preserve the original image of what that place used to be. And I totally agree with Tavleen that it used to be at the Holocaust uh, museums, which are all over the world. This is the kind of thing we should have made it back into. It was years Holocaust. It was something that we need to remember and we need to take inspiration from. So okay, the hang on, hang on, hang on. And yeah. But there was just, just let me complete the twofold. There was a sound and light show. It had made into a park. You know, even before it was made into some sort of a garden, it was already, and this was our biggest protest to the government that please can be uh, sure I'm, 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 I'm actually interrupting you because, sorry, your audio, your, your line is not very yeah. clear, but I think you're saying that the original aesthetic or the original context of that moment. Uh, has to be preserved. Uh, Sandeep, do you want to just uh, jump in here? You see, what's also happened is that the Prime Minister himself released a lot of these uh, videos, released a lot of these clips, thereby directly kind of endorsing them. And that's also why they got the attention that they did. So it's not like you can look at it and say, hey, somebody else did it. This is, be, you know, this has been done at the highest level. It's been approved at the highest level. And there, there are the emotions of a country. And for a party that places so much premium on nationalism, I think you've heard all the voices here very heartfelt uh, and I kind of agree with all, all of them. Sandeep. No, on the aesthetics and you know uh, uh, tampering with history, uh, uh, legacy, etc. I don't think there can be any dispute. And whatever we have, I have also seen it only on television and uh, uh, pictures. You know that uh, corridor, what has happened, is grotesque. Uh, you know, it's uh, it, it, there cannot be any, anybody with a minimum aesthetic sense would say that. So I'm appalled that you know something like that has been allowed to happen. It was possible to restore it, uh, uh, keeping uh, the basic character or the history, uh, and you didn't have to make this morale or uh, any of that uh, there. Now the problem is, uh, uh, you know, Barkha, just two or three points. None of this contradicting whatever we have discussed. One is we have got into a phase of competitive nationalism, and uh, I would refuse to believe you were talking about the committee. But uh, uh, you know that the Punjab government was not in some ways complicit with this whole restoration exercise. You know, and peep, somebody who is again uh, not an ordinary chief minister like uh, Captain Amrila Singh would understand these sensitivities and sensibilities. Uh, it could have been flagged much earlier, but I think everybody wants to jump in there. Secondly, uh, again, keeping uh, not, uh, not for a moment disputing uh, the aesthetics and how you do it. So if somebody were to do something over there to make it a tourist destination or uplift it, I, uh, but obviously- Okay, I hear, I hear you, I hear you. You're saying that sometimes you need a modern grammar to revisit the past. Uh, Kishwar, you're back. Uh, you know, your, your comment was completely garbled. So I'm going to, I'm hoping it's a better line. If you just want to come in on the sound and light show, the point that Geeta Bhatt made, that there used to be a sound and light show earlier too. So why is everyone jumping on this? Go ahead. Yeah, so basically my point was that yes, there was a sound and light show in Amitabh Bachchan's voice, but uh, the equipment had completely uh, got destroyed over the years and it was very uh, badly maintained. So it's not been, I think, more than a decade now before that sound and light show has actually been heard or seen. So it was there, but I wanted to make uh, the additional point that even though the sound and light show had been there, that does not justify that we make another sound and light show in that area. I'll tell you why, Barkha, because it is a very solemn site. And our representation to the government always was that it needs to be made in that, maintain the dignity, the honor of the people there, so that when you go in, it is a very stark ground, because it had already become like a park. Even earlier, now it has become more like a garden than it was here and this was what we had been requesting that it not be made this um, this this kind of way i totally understand we modernize we need to uh, 
uh, make a new generation aware of what had happened. That, that basically we needed to reclaim it even from what it was instead of going even further down that path. Uh, but Tavleen, I think there, there are a couple of points to be made here. Like I said, the Prime Minister tweeted this out, so everybody's saying, oh, this is the central government, this is central Vista Redux in Jallianwala Bagh. Uh, that's the first point. And the second point about you know, we're all old enough to, to have a relationship of, of memory with, with this. Sandeep's arguing that there might be an entire generation for which it needs to be spruced up, for which the Disneyfication may actually bring in more people. I don't agree, but it's an argument. Tavleen, go ahead. Odd to attack Modi for this. Because I saw the little list you produced of the committee members, and there's Ambika, Soni, etc. So for Rahul Gandhi to be leaping in and, you know, making a racket and talking about his father being a martyr and all, that's just garbage, all right? He, they have no right to speak because what they did earlier in Jalian Walabag was not great, right? It was actually, they turned it into a sort of municipal garden already, which they shouldn't have done. But somehow they'd managed to keep the, the you know, the somber quality of, of a massacre site, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas now what we've got are lasers. Even if there was a sound and light show to be reintroduced, do you need lasers and, you know, disco lights? I mean, you know, let's, let's try and remember that when, that, you know, people died there. They have to be remembered with, with, with candles, you know? Now, for instance, let me give you an example. In Berlin, there is... Yeah. A, 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 a Holocaust, not a Holocaust museum, but there is a grave for every Jewish person who died in the concentration camps. And you can't walk through it. And it's just graves, you know, and it's, it goes on and on and on. For It's near the Brandenburg gig. Nobody who goes to uh, Berlin can miss it. And all they did was for the, for the Jews that were killed, they made these graves. And it's grave upon grave upon grave. Now, that is a somber reminder of something that must never be forgotten. And, you know, when you Disneyfy it, you know, when you, I mean, don't, don't even put that picture up when I'm speaking, please. I just, I, I can't even bear to look at it. I can't bear to look at it. It reminds me, I live in Delhi near the farmhouses where they have the Dwarka, you know, wedding type stuff. And, the, and I promise you that's, this, this whoever's done it has taken their inspiration from that and shame on them and yeah. shame on the chief minister of Punjab. I can tell you that the younger generation demands and deserves authenticity, giving them something from history as it was something palpable, tangible is going to go a lot longer than giving them something like this. I can't tell you the uproar within people my age, within younger people. I mean, this flashing lights, yeah. it's not respectful. You can make things jazzy when when there is a time to do it, but this is not the time or the place. And also it presents a certain version of history, a version that is incorrect, a version that is distorted. We, as you know, what we do as oral historians, what Kishwa does at the museum is to present the versions of history from people who were there and the people who inherited those versions. I feel like this is a completely, I don't know, it's a distortion. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, just that's last, that's sorry, I, my question is what should or what can happen now, right? Can anything happen now? I, and I agree with Tavleen that basically everybody's been asleep at the wheel while this was happening. Uh, you know, you've got, you, you, you've got the whole bunch of them on that trust and they've all just gone and done a virtual ribbon cutting version of it. Uh, my question is, can anything happen uh, and should anything happen? Sandeep, you've heard the response to your modernizing the grammar for today's generation. So let me start last comments with you. Sandeep, go ahead. My point was, you know, uh, uh, raising the level, you know, the, by which you uh, uh, get it there. My, uh, my uh, point is certainly not undoing the history or the uh, legacy. But uh, Barkha, you know the tragedy. Uh, why nothing will happen? We all move on from one issue to the other. Like uh, somebody I know who tweeted that Rahul Gandhi is already on his next tractor rally. Uh, one day he makes a point about uh, his father being a martyr, etc. Some people try to uh, appropriate it, saying that it is the Congress people who died and uh, BJP people don't understand. And then you move on to the next issue. Uh, nobody will really 
uh, except for a few people like Kishwar and Anchal and Tavleen because she has a, a, this thing. Half the people don't care, you know, and uh, 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 things will just move on. That has to come, I think, in a much more palpable way, uh, not only not for uh, undoing this, but preventing such, uh, you know, yeah. uh, actions. I, I, I take your I take your point that for all of us, uh, uh, and and you know, at least I think four of us are are Punjabis on this. But I don't think Jallianwala Bagh is a, actually unlike partition which is you know something that is felt by the people of Punjab and the people of Bengal i actually think jallianwala bag is about the birth of our country and it's not really about one ethnic group or, or the other but kishor can anything be done now can anything be done after we've all angsted over this uh, do you still think that something can be preserved some I, you know we don't know because we have only these video clips it's been a virtual inauguration and so on I, I am quite, um, you know, optimistic about this, uh, Barkha, because I do believe that there is a historic uh, reason why we must try and take this bag back to what it was like, why we must create an awareness of that. And I think that we might be able to, if we do, uh, you know, request the government that there is a way of making sure that at least the original parts of the bag are still maintained the way they are. I'm certainly going to try. We did try by giving them the proposals earlier. I am not going to give up because I think this is too important for us. As you said, this is the one symbol of when Hindus and Muslims came together, apart from everything else. You had a uh, Serpafuddin Kuchlu, you had a Satyapal Deng. I mean, you know, coming together, leading the movement of uh, Jallianwala Bagh. And these were just ordinary people. So who is going to protest? I hope we can uh, request the government to do something about that. Just the bits that are the original parts of the bag, at least let us try and, uh, you know, take yeah. them back to what they were like. We will try. Barkha, since you made the point about Punjabis on the show, let me tell you the uh, original trust was run by a Bengali. Okay, That's right. Still. And that family, the family is still, <laughs> the family is still, yeah, the family is still there. The family is still there, by the way. I, and if I, I read somewhere that he was a doctor and he gave up his job as a doctor to actually be associated with the bag. Uh, Anjan, last thoughts and then I'll give Tavleen the last word. I think that the only place we can find the true Jaliawala Bagh now is in literature, sadly. And maybe so the sad. efforts of people like Kishwar. I mean, it's a bit sad, but there have been some incredible books out there about it. And uh, Kishwar has written one such book. So I feel like I will turn to that. What would you say? And I'm so glad you made the point that this is not BJP Congress. It's the whole bunch of them not putting a value on collective memory. That's actually what's happened here. Uh, but go ahead. Last word to you. Okay. There is restoration and then there's erasure. What they have done is they've erased the history of that place. And they've turned it into something else. And I am actually going to say that I'm ready to start a support group on social media, on whatever, saying, give it to Kishwar. She's already running a museum. She has the full idea of what that should be. And, you know, let, let us all support her. She's done all the research and handed it to the people who've done this monstrosity. So, you know, please, let's not, let's not give up. And let us really try and somehow make sure that that you know that at least the entrance, you know. Though I don't yeah. know, they've destroyed it. But I, I think whatever can be whatever can be retrieved must be retrieved. We must hope that that happens. I have to say, listening to all of you, I've had goosebumps today, and I really do think that you know we talk so much about nationalism, and when it really actually counts, uh, you know how this country was created, you know. The, how 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 its sort of genesis virtually took place. Uh, we have gone and done this to it. So I do hope uh, that we don't give up. Uh, leaving it there, Tavleen, Anchal, Kishwar, and and Sandeep. Uh, yes, please do keep fighting the good fight. We're with you on this. To our audience, uh, yeah, we'll sad sad note to end on, but yeah, we'll keep up the fight. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Mojo Story and support independent, robust journalism.